All right, welcome to our exam review for uh, exam two, Math 103 Level Arts. Uh, just as we're getting started here, uh, just a little heads up. Um, this video is copyrighted by me, so um, please, for use only uh, for my students here at Olivet, uh, please don't copy this to the internet or put it on some of the, uh, you know, the homework sites and things like that. So, well, okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, the first question I did is a matching. Uh, we've got some extra choices over here uh, than we do uh, things that I'm asking for. So some of these choices you're not going to use. Um, you can work forwards or you can work backwards on these. Um, you, you're all working from this graph here and we're just kind of testing basic definitions. So here we're looking for a cycle, a vertex of degree four, a path that's not a cycle. Remember, cycle you start and end at the same place. An edge cycle, uh, vertices adjacent to E, a loop, and then uh, a vertex cycle. So notice we got three cycles in there, vertex, um, edge, and then just a plain cycle that doesn't fit one of these. And you want to try to use, um, you can use answers more than once. Um, so you can use these answers more than once. Um, so just check careful your directions. I may, you know, say that you cannot use an answer more than once. Uh, that actually makes it a little bit less confusing when I do that. So, well, let's see. Sometimes you can work backwards. Um, sometimes you can work forwards, kind of process of elimination. So um, with a, I'm actually going to start with the second one here, a vertex of degree four. So a vertex is going to be a single letter over here. So if I look at D here, D is degree one, two, three, four, five. So that one's out. Um, H, so let's see, H is degree one, two, three, four. Okay, so H is a vertex of, um, of degree four. And that is choice E. So vertex of degree four right here, E. And let's see here, choice E was H. Uh, so we've actually used that one up. Um, if we go down to the next one here, F, that's the only other one that's just a vertex. F has degree one, two, three, four. So F would also be a possible answer there. Oops, sorry. Uh, I'm writing the letter of the vertex. I want the letter of the answer, which is choice I. So I or E would work for a vertex of degree four. Um, let's see. A loop. That's e that should be easy to spot. Uh, looking over here, I don't see any loops. Remember, a loop would be uh, something that would look like this. Okay, and we don't see any loops in this graph. So here, that would be a choice J, none in this graph. So that's a J. And actually, we can use that um, cho that choice possibly more than once. This could be some of these other things don't exist. Uh, let's see here. How about a path that's not a cycle? Um, or no, let's try this. Uh, vertices adjacent to E. So adjacent means right next to E. So connected up to E here, we've got C and B and G and H. So C, B, G, and H. Um, so here I see B, G, and H. Um, Yeah, we actually should also have a C in there. Um, oh, and then, yeah, here, actually, here we go. C, B, G, and H. So this doesn't have all the vertices that are adjacent, so that can't be it. So it's going to be this one, B. Okay, we use that guy up. Uh, let's see here. Now we got left a vertex cycle, edge cycle, a regular cycle, and a path that's not a cycle. 
Okay, so if we start going down through these choices here, um, we're looking for cycles and and uh, paths. Well, the, that's just a vertex, so that doesn't fit. That's out. Um, G, J, H, G, E, H, G. Okay, so let's see. So you're starting here at G, and then you go to J, and then you go to H, and then you go back to G. That would actually be a cycle there, and then E, and then H, and then G. So that's actually two different cycles. Uh, starts and ends at the same place. Um, it is, you know, it starts and ends at the same place, but we repeated a vertex here. So, um, but it, it's not, uh, let's see, it's not a path, because a path is going to start and end at different places. Um, well, actually, a, yeah, a path that's not a cycle. And then it's not an edge cycle, it doesn't use every edge. Uh, let's see, a vertex cycle, it doesn't use every vertex, so it can't be any of those. So this one, uh, I don't like. I don't want to make a decision on the idea. I want to see if I can find a better answer, one that doesn't reuse that vertex G in the middle. Um, a, D, F, I, G, J. Okay, so A, D, F, I, G, J. Okay, so that starts and ends at different places. That's a path inside the graph going like this. Okay, so that's going to be a path that's not a cycle, uh, which is C. So that's a D is going to go in here. Uh, an edge cycle. Remember that an edge cycle, to get an edge cycle, you have to have um, zero odd vertices. So you have to have no odd vertices. So we would look at this graph and say, well, do we have any odd vertices in there? Okay, because uh, let's see, edge cycle, we need uh, zero odds here. Whoops. Okay, zero odd vertices. And let's see here. G is degree one, two, three, four, five. There's an odd vertex. So there can't be an edge cycle in here. Okay, so that's going to be a choice J, none in this graph. So that's another J. Uh, a vertex cycle. So we want to hit every vertex. Well, let's see here. Um, this is not a vertex cycle. D, B, E, J. So D, B, E, and there's not even an edge from E to J. That's that's not even, that's nothing. Um, this long guy, that's got a chance of being a vertex cycle. Um, a, D, B, E, H, J, G, I, F, C, A. So let's see here. So A to D to B to E uh, to H to J to G to I to F, to C, and back to A. Okay, so that just kind of goes around the outside here. And that hits every vertex. That's our vertex cycle. Okay, so this is, this, this one actually, I wanted to hold off on checking this one because it had so many vertices in it. But yeah, down here, we hit every vertex. So vertex cycle, K. Okay, and that one's used up. Uh, D, F, I, G, D. Okay, so D to F to I to G and back to D. So that might, that made a cycle here like this. And it's not a vertex cycle and it's not an edge cycle. So that's just a plain cycle. So uh, choice L, that'll work in here. Um, so that's probably your best your best choice for A um, because this is two cycles repeated. So we use that one up. And see we had you know we had a couple things left over here. So we wanted this one to here because um, we didn't want to have a repeated vertice in the middle here. We've got G as a repeated vertice. Our repeated vertex. Okay, so sometimes you work forward, sometimes you can work backwards and you do a little choice, a little bit of elimination.
And on the actual test, I think I do it so that none of these choices gets used more than once. And that way you won't have this situation here. And then again, for a cycle up here, you could have put J. Uh, no, you couldn't put J. Um, you could put K. That vertex cycle is also a cycle. Okay. So I'm going to try and work it out on the exam, though, so that there's not multiple choices. So got to know those basic definitions. Okay, number two, we got a graph. This is a floor plan. We want to decide if the floor plan problem can be solved. If so, find a solution. If not, explain why. So remember what you do with a floor plan problem is each room is a vertex and then each doorway is an edge. So we kind of lay out our vertices here. So that's going to be A, B, and C across the top here. So there's A, B, and C. And then D, E, F, and G is off to the side. So we got a D here and E and F and then G off to the side. Okay, and then A is joined to B, D, and the outside. So B, D, and then the outside, G. Um, B is joined to A, E, and C. We already got A. Put in E, put in C. C is joined to B and the outside and F. So we got B, the outside here, and F. Uh, D is joined to A, the outside, and E. So we got A. Here's E. And then the outside is G. And then E is joined to D, B, F, and the outside. So we got D, we got B. Got to put in F and then the outside. And then F is joined to E and C, and we got E and C. So we're all set there. So here's our graph representation. So that's the first part of solving the floor plane problem. And then the second part is can you go through every door exactly once? Okay, so we translated that into a graph. Translated, keyword there. And now we're going to solve the, the graph solve the math problem. So um, to ha hit every door once here means hit every edge once here. So uh, we want to be able to get um, uh, an edge path here. So we need zero or two odd vertices. Okay, so we need zero or two odd vertices. zero or two odds there. And so let's see here. So let's uh, find our odd vertices. So A has one, two, three edges, so that's an odd. Um, D here has one, two, three edges, that's an odd. Um, B here has one, two, three edges, that's an odd. C has one, two, three, that's an odd. Um, G is even, E is, or F is even, E is even, um, but we've got four odds. Okay, so can we solve it? Um, no, can't solve. Okay, because we've got four odds. Yeah, my writing. Okay, so if we did have two odds, then one of those would be the start and the other one would be the end. And if we had zero odds, then you could start and end at the same place. So, uh, so in this case, we can't solve. Okay, but on the test, I may put one that you can solve. Okay, so that's how I could change it. So I'd have to have zero or two odds there. Uh, determine whether the following graph has an edge path. Okay, so again, edge path path is going to be zero or two odds. And so let's see here. We need to find our odd vertices. So let's see, one, two, three, that's an odd vertex there. 
Uh, that's got four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, so that's two odd vertices. So we should be able to do this. So let's let this be our start. And let's let this guy over here be our end. And let's see, I'm looking at um, patterns here. And I'm thinking, let's see, what if we go around this first circle and then go across and go around the second circle and then finish going across? Yeah, I think that'll work here. So we go around the first circle, so this would be one. And then there's a vertex there, so this would be two. And then keep going down here, three. And then around here, four. Okay, then go across, so five in there. Uh, now we're going to go around this circle. So six. And then seven. Eight. And then nine. So now we're back down here. And then finish going across. So that's ten and then 11 and then we end there okay and since I didn't put since I didn't label the vertices here uh, you, you can just do arrows and you know if you get cut off somewhere in the middle then you know just back up and and you know try again but try looking for patterns okay so let's see uh, determine whether the graphs have an edge cycle so an edge cycle is zero odds. Um, if so, find it. If not, add edges that will make it into a graph that has an edge cycle and find the edge cycle. So we need zero odd vertices. Okay, so let's see this one. We've got one, two, three, four. That's four. That's four, 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 four. They all have four edges connected up. So this one has zero odds. So that one is a yes. And let's go ahead and find it. So it uh, doesn't matter where your start and end is. Um, why don't we, uh, let's see, why don't we put our, our start maybe right here. And so let's see here. So I'm thinking um, there's lots of ways to do this, but how about, let's see, how about we go around the circle and then come in here and go around kind of the four petals of this thing and then go around the square and then end up. So if I do that, here I'll go around here is one and around here is two and that takes me back to here and I'm going to go around the inside here so this would be three up here four uh, around here five down here six around this way seven and then I don't want to finish up here, so now I'm going to go around the square on the inside. So let's do 8, 9, 10, 11. That puts me back here, and then we want to finish up. So that would be 12. So you can do it with 12. Okay, and then this next one here, again, count your odd vertices. So let's see, um, here we've got one, two, three, so that's an odd vertex. So let's box that guy in. Uh, this is just two. This guy has got one, two, three, so that's an odd vertex. We'll box that one in. Uh, one, two, three, that's an odd vertex. Box that one in. One, two, three, that's an odd vertex. Box that guy in. Uh, and I think all the rest of them are twos. So it looks like we've got two pairs of odd vertices. So you want to join pairs of odd vertices. So I think maybe let's join these guys up here. And then let's join these guys down here. 
So now it's got uh, zero odds. So we had two odds, or I'm sorry, four odds here. So uh, that tells us that we join uh, pairs of odds. Okay, so that's what we did, joined our pairs of odds. Now we should be able to start and end any place we want. So um, why don't we let uh, this guy up here, why don't we let that be our start and, start and end. So start equals end. All right, so let's see here. Um, let's try and think about patterns here. So what if I went around like the outer edge of these three circles but then didn't quite finish up and then went around here and tried to do the inside. Okay, I think I can do that. I think I see a pattern. So let's go around the outside. So here's one, two, three, uh, four, up here five. Okay, and then I don't want to go up here and finish up yet because uh, I've got these edges here. I'm trying to hit every edge. Okay, so let's go around the inside here six. And then here I can only go one way, so seven right there. And then let's see, let's do eight. And then I don't want to go back up here and finish up because I haven't gotten this part yet. So let's go up here for nine and then come down for 10 and go around the dotted edge for 11 and now come up here for 12 and then finish up here with 13. And we got it. So if you found another way to do it but you use 13 edges, we're okay. Okay, next we are looking at uh, vertex cycles. Okay, so you need to hit every vertex once, but not necessarily every edge. And that's the one where we use that theorem, Dirac's theorem, which is the promise that says, well, I promise if you do the three conditions, then there has to be a vertex cycle. Um, but if you don't do one of the conditions, still check. Maybe you have one, maybe you don't. So first part of the problem says determine whether it satisfies the theorem. So remember the three parts of the theorem are number one, does it have greater than three vertices? So we count the vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine is greater than three uh, vertices. So that one checks. Second condition, um, we need to check, um, oh, you know what? That's actually, that was the second condition. Uh, let me back up here. Um, first condition is, is it connected? Okay, is it connected? Yeah, it's all one connected piece. So first it has to be connected. Oh, and um, just a note, in the key I have online, I'm noticing this graph might be a little bit different. This is a correct solution. This is the correct graph right here. Uh, number two, does it have greater than three, three vertices? So yes, nine is greater than three vertices. And then the last one we have to check and see is each vertex connected to at least half the others. So you take your nine divided by two and that's 4.5, but you round that up, okay? So you're gonna round that up to five and then you have to tell me, well, what does that five mean? What do you do with it? Well, the theorem says is each, oops, um, is each vertex um, connected to at least half the others, which is at least 4.5, you gotta round up to five. So to at least, So uh, let's see here on the end, one, two, three, four, five, that one's connected up. 
Here we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's okay. Down here, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, down here, one, two, three, four. Oh, that one is not connected to at least five. Um, and this one up here also, one, two, three, four. Okay, this one's connected to five. The middle is connected to one, two, three, four, five, six. This has got five and this has got five, but we got two that have four. So um, either this vertex here or this vertex here, and you could name the vertex there. Um, you know, you could call this vertex down here, you could say, just call that vertex A. And so is each vertex connected to at least five? No, uh, A is not. Okay, so now don't stop there. So we did the first part of the problem, determine whether it satisfies Dirac's theorem. Second part is, if it does, find the vertex cycle, because you know there has to be one. Um, if not, determine whether there's still a vertex cycle. There could still be one. So um, can we go around the graph and hit every vertex once, even though there's not five connections to every vertex? Um, and I'm thinking that there's enough connections in here that we'll be able to do this. So let's see here. What if um, we got to pick our start and end here? So why don't we take this vertex on the right there, cycle. So that's going to be start equals end. And uh, well, let's see here. How about if, uh, no, actually, let's see. I think, yeah, we can pick anything to be our start and end here. So let's see. This one, I don't think I want to go around the outside edge because if I go this far around, then I got to go in and I've got to connect up to these vertices. And I think I'm going to end up using that middle one twice if I try and go all the way around the edge. So I think I might kind of like try to wind through the center, something like that, and then go around. So um, how about... Um, Maybe go here first, so that's one. That leads us to here. And I'll come down here, two. And then let's see, let's go up to the middle, three. And then I can go straight up, that'd be four. So now I gotta hit these four vertices. So let's see if I went over like this, down to the left, and then back, then I'd get them all. So this will be five then, and then down here would be six, and then over here is a seven, and then back this way is eight, and then we want to end over here, and that's nine. Okay, so you can do it in nine with nine edges. And that's not the only way to do it. In fact, I think on the key, I, I even used a different method. So just um, don't remember, don't stop after you check the conditions. If one of them fails, you know, this one was a no. If that fails, still go back and check and see if there's a vertex cycle. Uh, draw a complete graph with seven vertices. Okay, so let's bring this down, take a little bit better look at this. So complete graph means every possible edge. So just take seven dots and put them around in a circle. So two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you want to have every possible connection. So if you start with this top one, you want to connect it to all the other ones. So you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then just move around. This one's already connected to that one. So two, three, four, five, and six. Move around to here. We already got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now come down to this one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now come around to this one. We've got one, two, three, four, four. Yeah, fur. First four are done. Five and six. 
and then come around to this one, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So that's complete graph, every possible edge. Um, what's the degree of each vertex? Uh, this is going to be n minus one, and here n equals seven, it's the number of vertices we have. So n minus one is seven minus one, which is six. And then how many distinct vertex cycles? And um, that was a formula that we worked out in class. Remember that's n minus one factorial divide by two. So n minus one is seven minus one or six. So this is six factorial divide by two. And in your calculator, if you do six factorial, or you can just multiply um, six times five times four times three times two times one, and then get an answer and divide by two. If you do that, you get 360. So 360 different vertex cycles possible. That's a lot of vertex cycles. Okay, so that's complete graphs. Okay, here um, we're running a delivery service uh, from your office. We've got to pick up three deliveries in nearby cities and then go back to the office. And the table is giving you driving times in minutes. Um, draw a graph representation of the problem and find the best order to pick up the deliveries. Okay, so your, your best order here, this is traveling salesman problem because you're, you're going to hit all the cities. Okay, you're going to hit, uh, you start at your office and you've got three cities. You've got Runt City and Mathopolis and Green Acres. Sound like fine places to live. Um, so here, uh, let's look at part A. So we'll get the graph representation of this guy going first. So we want to draw a complete graph with one, two, three, four locations. Okay, so a uh, complete graph with four vertices. That's what you uh, draw as a triangle. And we've got vertices out on the edges here, or I'm sorry, on the corners. And then you do one vertex in the middle. Okay, and then you want to label each one of those with um, with a town. Okay, so um, let's see, you're going to start and end at your office. So we could put uh, the office up at the top here. Um, and then, let's see, we're going to Runt City, Mathopolis, and Green Acres. Okay, so let's see, so we can put an R here, and an M here, and then a G down here for Green Acres. Okay, then we want to transfer over the driving times. So from office to Runt City, from O to R is 20. So O to R, this is a 20. Uh, from office to Mathopolis is 30. So O to M here, that's a 30. And from office to Green Acres, that's a 15. So this right here is a 15. And now go to the second row. Um, so here, Runt City to Mathopolis, R to M is 35. So R to M right here is 35. Um, and then here, this 45 is from R to G. So R to G, that's 45. And then we got this 10, which is left, and that's from M to G. So M to G is 10 right there. OK, so that's the first part. Draw the representation, OK? And find the best order. So that's saying solve the traveling salesman problem. So we need to, to find uh, three different cycles, OK? So um, remember the way that you do this is you can say, well, okay, on the first cycle, we're going to start from O. Okay, on the first cycle, I'm not going to use that edge. Okay, so I'm going to have to go around like this. So we can go O, M, R, G, O. So we're, there's going to be three cycles because if we go back to that previous formula, the N minus 1 factorial over 2, um, that's 3 factorial which is 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we could go from O to M and then to R 
and then to G, and then back up to O. So we're kind of going around um, this arrowhead that's pointing to the lower right. Okay, now put the distances underneath those. Um, so let's see, so O to M here is, we're not using this, uh, O to M is 30. Uh, M to R is 35. R to G is 45. And then G back to O is 15. And if you add those guys up, so let's see here, this is 65, um, 70, and 10 is 80, and 45 is 125. So 125 for that route. Second one, okay, so now instead of using this, so let's get that guy off there. Then let's not use that edge to the upper right. So then we uh, we want to go around this arrowhead here that points to the lower left. Okay, and that's going to be a different route. So starting from O, we go to R, to G, to M, back to O. So O to R, and then to G, and then to M, and then to O. Okay, so O to R, uh, that's 20. Um, R to G, 45. Um, G to M, so let's see, G to M is 10. M back to O, right here, 30. And we add those up, let's see, this is 40, and another 20 is 60, and 45 is 105. And then the third one. So on the third one, what we want to do is we want to use this edge. First one, we didn't use that edge. Second one, we don't use this edge. And then the third one, don't use the bottom edge. Okay. So if I don't use the bottom, I'm going to have to go around like this, and I get this arrowhead that's pointing up. So it's O, R, M, G, O. And we know it's different because the other two um, cycles use that edge, and this one doesn't. So O, R, M. So O to R to M. So O, R, M to G and back to O. Okay, so let's see. So O to R is 20. R to M, right here, 35. M to G, 10. And then G back to O, 15. So let's see here, 20 and 35 is 55, 65, 70, and 10 is 80. So this is actually 80. So then um, the best order is going to be whichever one gives the lowest time. And in this case, that's the lowest time. Okay, so this one's best. So you need to, when you get done with the problem, you need to tell me that you need to interpret this information and tell me what the solution is, okay? So find the best order to pick up the deliveries, okay? Uh, you need to tell me that, okay, I know this is the best order to pick up the deliveries right here, O to R to M to G to O, because it's got the lowest time. So you got to tell me best order means lowest time to make that, that translation. Uh, part B. Your driver drives this route five days per week, 50 weeks a year. He gets a couple weeks off for vacation. Uh, how much driving time is saved in a year compared to the next longer route? 
and how much would you save in wages if you pay the driver eight bucks an hour? Okay, well, um, the next best route from um, the 80 minutes is the 105 minutes. So in part B here, and let me actually bring this down a little bit. So in part B, you save uh, 105 minus 80, which equals 25 per day. So you save 25 minutes a day. And he does that five days a week times 50 weeks a year. So this is going to be minutes saved then. Total, actually. Total minutes saved is going to equal the 25 minutes per day times five days a week and then times uh, 50 weeks a year. So 5 times 50 is 250 days and then 25 minutes per day. And if you multiply those out on the calculator, you get um, 6,250. And that is minutes. Okay, because the table here, uh, this is gives driving time in minutes. So that's minutes saved, not miles saved. Okay, so that's the total minutes saved in a year. and But the guy gets paid by the hour, so we need to figure out the hours that are saved because uh, the driver gets 8 bucks per hour. Man, that's not very much. So we need to take our 6250 here and divide it by 60 minutes in an hour. And if you do that division, you get um, 104.16 uh, repeating. So you'd say 104.17 hours that are saved. And then you would do $8 an hour times that 104 hours. Okay, so the money saved equals $8 per hour times your 104, whoops, not 1.4. 104.17 and round that guy to the nearest penny. So if we do 8 times 104.17, get 833.36. And you know, depending on how many how many decimal places you take here. This is actually one six repeating. It's one six 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 six. I just rounded it to the nearest uh, um, hundredth. Um, so your answer might differ just a little bit in this decimal place depending on how far you round this. But it should be, you know, 833.3 something. It might be off in the cents a little bit. So, and then that's dollars. So $800 saved. Okay, so I mean, if you do this year after year after year, saving 800 bucks, that's not a bad thing. That's good for your business. You're saving money. Part C uses the nearest neighbor method here, um, starting at uh, M to find an approximation to the solution. So part C, we're doing nearest neighbor. And remember, nearest neighbor, what you do is you, you'd start with your M right here, and then you go to the closest edge. So we start with M. I'm sorry, you go to the closest vertex. So 30, 35 and 10, so G is the closest. So next one's going to be G. And um, here, let me get this guy out of here. Let me take that out of there because we're allowed to use that edge in part C. And so we went from M to G, so we did this first in our approximation. And then from G, uh, the closest edges, we've got 15 and our closest vertices vertices. We got 15 that way, 45 this way. So we want to take the 15 because it's shorter. So this is 2. So we go from G to O. So M, G, O. And then from O, so we've used up these two edges. We've touched 1, 2, 3 vertices. So from O, we've got a 30 and a 20. 
Uh, we don't want to use the 30 because then that'll end us back at M too quick. We haven't hit R, so we got to do the 20. So this is third. And you get down to R, and that was uh, so O to so this is M to G to O and then to R. And then you uh, close it back up by going back to Mathopolis. So that's fourth. So back to M. So here, if you use nearest neighbor method, I have to give you a starting vertex here. I had to give you this. Okay, and I specified a, a different starting vertex so it wouldn't necessarily repeat one of these guys up here. So let's see. So M to G is M to G is 10. G to O uh, was our 15. O to R right here was our 20. And then uh, R back to M was our 35. And you add all those up. So we get 25, 45, 50, and 30 is 80. So actually that agrees with this one. And uh, look here, M, G, O, R, M, M, G, O, go back to the beginning, R, M. So that's really the same cycle, it's just in a different order. So it, it gave the, the best cycle from using brute force. So that's what I'm doing up here. This is brute force method. It's what your book called brute force, um, where you list all the possibilities. brute force for sol solving the traveling salesman. But here, notice our approximation using nearest neighbor. That gave us the, the best method, too. Sometimes it doesn't. OK, trees. Uh, remember that a tree is a graph that has no cycles in it. And a tree has one less edge than it does vertices. Okay, so we want to find a minimal spanning tree for this graph. So um, just some notes here. A tree, remember, if it has n edges, um, whoops, I'm sorry, that's actually going to be n vertices. If it's got n is the number of vertices, then you have one less edge. So you got n minus 1 edges. So if you want to check and see if something's a tree, count the number of vertices. Um, if it had 10 vertices, it would need 9 edges. So on this one, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We've got 12 vertices. And for edges, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 edges. So that is not a tree the way it sets. So we want to find a tree that hits all the vertices. That's what a spanning tree is, a tree that hits all the vertices. So we want to get, since we, we're going to keep all our vertices, but then we want one less, okay, one, one less edge. So here we had, what do we have again? There's 8, 10, 12 vertices. Okay, so what we need is we need, we want 11 edges that hit all 12 vertices. And we want it to be minimal. So we want to do things in a certain order. So out here, let's go ahead and redraw just the vertices. So we got those two up on top. And then we've got four here. You know what, I think I might have missed a vertex. I'm looking at this real quick here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, we've got 13 vertices. We want 12 edges. Sorry about that. And so let's see, we got that one vertex in the middle right there. And then one, two, three, and four. And then we got these two down on the bottom there. One there, and one there. 
All right, and then remember what we want to do to get a minimal spanning tree is we want to add edges into the diagram here. Um, add edges, with starting with the smallest edges. Add as many of those without making a cycle. And then off to the side, I want you to show me your thinking process, what order you did. So here we've got multiple numbers of edges at the same length, but uh, there's, no, there's no ones in there. Twos, uh, we've got one, two, three, four twos, and I think we can add all of those. So this would be a two here, and a two here, and then we can add these twos. Two there, and a two there. Next we go to threes. Um, so we've got threes along here, and then threes along the top. So we've got six threes. Um, so we can add this three. That's okay. But then this one, we can't add because it makes a cycle. A, a tree has no cycles in it. Okay, so not that one. Uh, we can add this three. Uh, and then up here, these edges were threes. So we can add this three. That's okay. No cycles. Uh, this one, again, we can't add because it makes a cycle right there. And then this one we can add. That's a three. And then fours. Uh, we got one, two, three, four fours. So add as many of those as we can. So that's going to be a four here. And a four here. And then a four down here. And then a four down here. Oh, I forgot to keep track of my steps. So step number one. We had one, two, three, four twos. So four twos. And four times two is going to be eight. That is going to add to the total length of the graph. Um, and then uh, let's see, we had one, two, three, four threes. So step two, we added four threes. And that four times three is 12, so that was total length 12 in our spanning tree. And then we had one, two, three, four fours. So step three was four fours. And four times four is 16. So that added a total of 16. So this is the minimal spanning tree. That's what I asked you to do here, find the minimal spanning tree. But I'll probably ask you to find the minimal spanning tree and find its total weight. So the total weight is the length of all the edges. So then add these guys up. So 8 and 2 is 10, and 6 is 16. So 6, carry 1, 2, 3. So 36 right there is the total weight. Okay, so that's spanning trees. And then the last thing we did... Um, Actually, this was, I did some of this up here when we did the approximation to the traveling salesman problem, but I wanted to do one more example. So this example is, um, is an add-on here. So I added a problem number nine. So first, use the nearest neighbor method to approximate a solution to traveling salesman for this graph. And then use the cheapest, uh, whoops, I should say cheapest link method. Use the cheapest link method. And actually, the nearest neighbor method, uh, I need a starting vertex here. So let's say starting at A. OK. Um, to approximate a solution to traveling salesman. So instead of doing brute force on this thing, we're going to do nearest neighbor, and then we're going to do um, cheapest link. So I'm going to make a copy of this diagram here so I can do two different, so I can do my solutions on two different diagrams. Okay, so part A here, nearest neighbor starting at A. So what we do there is um, we're going to start at A. We want to go to the closest vertex from A. So this is 6 away, 4 away, 
This is four, two, and three, so two is the closest. So our first leg is going to go from A to E. So um, we're going to do A to E. So A to E. And that's a two. Okay, then from E, um, we want to go to the next closest vertex. So this is D is three away, six away, five away. We already used this, and then five. Uh, so three is the closest here. So we'll go from E to D next. So from E to D. And that was three units. And then from D, we can go to C, B. We don't want to go back to A yet, because that would um, that would close up the cycle too soon. But we could go to C, which is 4, B is 3, or F here is 3. So here, actually, we've got a tie. We could either go to F for a 3 there, we could go to B for a 3 there. Um, so you can pick either one. Let's go, um, let's go from D to F. Let's use that one. So this will be our third one. So we're going to go D to F. And that's a 3. And then from F, we've got to hit B and C before we get back to A. It's 4 units to C, and it's 7 units to B. So we want to go to C next. So that's going to be our fourth move. So F to C, and that is 4 units. And then from C, we don't want to go back to A yet, so we have to go to B. So this is going to be fifth. So C to B. And that's two units. And now we're up at B, and we end up by going back to A. So that's going to be our sixth move. And that's uh, length six. So B back to A is length six. So you given a starting vertex, go to the closest vertex, go to the closest one from there, don't form a cycle, don't finish too soon. Okay, you have to have six edges in this because there's six vertices. And then we add these guys up to get the total weight. So that's going to give us the length of our um, our path. I'm sorry, our cycle. So two and three is five, and seven here, 12, 14 and six is 20. So cheapest link gave us 20 for six vertices. And now on this one, I'm sorry, nearest neighbor gave us 20. On this one, we want to do cheapest link. So um, remember with cheapest link, you pick the shortest edge overall. So I'm going to switch to a brush here. Um, and let's see when I do these like in blue. Okay, and I think I want a little bit bigger than that. There we go. Okay, so you look over the whole graph, and we want to pick the shortest edge. Okay, which uh, there's no ones in the graph, but there is there is a two. There's a two right here. Okay, so that's BC, and so uh, BC is actually our first one. So we've got BC. You know what? Uh, let me go back here. So BC was first. All right, and then uh, let's see, do we have any other twos? Yep, we got one right here, A to E, and that does not form a cycle, so we'll add in A to E. So this is A to E. Both of those are twos. And then let's see, there's no more twos. So now we look at threes that we can add in. We could add in this three right here, E to D. That doesn't make a cycle. Okay, so E, D, or D, E, however, whichever one you want to do. Uh, probably D, E, because it's alphabetical. So D, E, that's a three. And now let's see, um, we've got a three right here. D to F, and then we've got a 3 right here, B to D. 
Um, so uh, we could add in either one of those. Uh, why don't we add in? It, it's a tie. You can break it arbitrarily. So pick either one. Doesn't matter. So why don't we add in B to D? Okay. Uh, so B to D, and that's a three. And we haven't got a cycle yet. Uh, so let's see if we can add in some more threes. So this is three here. Okay, but if we add this three in, we don't have a cycle, but then, um, you know, we haven't completed a cycle, but then this has degree three. And in a cycle, you want to start and end at the same place. And here we actually, we want to hit every vertex um, exactly once. Okay, and if we do degree three, then this got hit more than once. So we don't want to add that three in. So next we would go up to fours. Oh, no, wait, we got a three here. Okay, so we can add this three in right here. That's okay, because we've just got a cycle, or I'm sorry, we've just got degree two here. Everything's got degree two and no cycles. So A to F, that's okay to add in. And that was a three. And then this three we can't add in, and that's the last three. So now we go for fours. So let's see here. This four, we can't add that four in because that uh, gives us degree three there. So that that's not allowed. Um, this four here, we can't add that one in because that gives us degree three here and also degree three there. In a cycle, we want degree two of every vertex. Um, this four, can't add that one in because, again, degree three. And then this four is the last one. And that one does work. So now every vertex has degree two, and we've hit every vertex exactly once. So we got our vertex cycle. We got our six edges. You got six vertices here. You need six edges. So that was a C to F, and that was a four. Okay, so we had one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. So we need from A, one, two, three, four, five, six edges. So um, this is the order that we pick things in. So if you use cheapest link, if I, if I, you know, if I ask you to use cheapest link, I want I see you, you know, write out this order that you picked things in. So this was, you know, step one, step two. Step three, step four, step five, and step six. And then um, the total weight or the total length of that. So you got four there, and six there is 10, and seven more, that's a 17. And notice that's better than the 20 we got here. And then actually, with cheapest link, there's one last thing you want to do you want to list the order of the vertices. Okay, so we've got the cycle here, but now we want to actually go out and list that. So from A, we could go A to E. So you go A to E, E to D, so to D, D up to B, and then B down to C, and then C over to F. and then F back to A. So, you know, very last step, you want to actually list out your cycle. So here we listed the edges in the cycle, and you can see the edges because we shaded them in. But then, you know, at the very last, if you use cheapest length, then, you know, list out one of the cycles here. And I just started and ended at A because that's what we did over here. And then we could compare them. So here we only got 20, but here we got 17. And I'm not sure what the absolute best solution is if you use brute force, um, but I bet it's not much better than 17. And this might have even tied our best. So, and then probably the last thing I would just remind you of um, for the exam is remember what our theme for the chapter is. Okay, important word is translation. Okay, so what we do is we take real life. This is what we've been doing in 
all you know a bunch of these problems most of these problems we take a real life situation we translate to math okay so this arrow stands for our translating so we draw the graph okay then we solve the math And then once we've got the graph solution, like we did here, we could translate back to real life. Okay, so we go back to real life. So like with the delivery problem, then we go back and say, well, here's the order you do things in. So translate back. So take a real life problem, translate to math, solve in math, translate back to real life. Okay, that's the theme of the chapter. So that's an important idea that I want you to know. So that's fair game for me to ask that. Um, and then, you know, again, I, I vary the questions, so there may be variations on things here, uh, but I've tried to mention things along the way. Um, you know, like this with the, the tree with the n vertices, n minus 1 edges. Notice that this is a tree because we've got the 13 vertices, and for edges we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that is a tree, and it's the shortest tree that hits every vertex. And its total weight or total length is 36. Okay, so I think we should be in good shape.